good from the bottom down there. And uh, if you go to that list, you'll see the post that I just made that points to the uh, Google Code project. And uh, that has some, some code for you to play with. Um, the uh, APKs that uh, Pierce mentioned earlier uh, for your Evo. And uh, also some, some stuff that I put together for um, using op open OCD in order to, to do the JTAG with the, um, the home router device. And uh, does anybody want to see a demo of the device getting rooted? Yeah? yeah? Because I think we have a couple of minutes and we could probably set that up. I don't know. I mean, that, was, that seemed like a medium. I mean, we could also do it in somewhere else, you know. Yeah? Okay. Okay. I hear the bring it. That sounds good. That sounds good. Is there anything else on here we need to show? Does everybody have these URLs down? I'm going to pull the plug. They're on the disk. Right? They're, well, uh, they're, they're on the internet. They're on the interwebs. And the disk points you to the interwebs. So. It'll get you there eventually. Just close my lid and you'll be fine. Pardon our brief changeover. So while he's doing that, uh, I would like to point out that it was pretty disturbing that even through your, when you go to the Clear website, you're a paying customer, you log into your account, check your account or whatever, there is no option to opt out of this LBS system. It just, it doesn't exist. And that really kind of sucks because we would like to see a opt out option, especially as a paying customer when we're paying for, you know, half a dozen devices. Uh, we just don't want to be tracked. That's it. They don't, no one has a right to know my location and we just think that they should give us an option to opt out of this because uh, right now you're stuck. That's it. You buy this gear, you can be tracked. So that's something to think about. Those of you who go out and get WiMAX and if it comes to your areas, uh, consider emailing customer service if you can. Uh, go to developer.clear.com, dig around. You can find uh, some engineers that are on there and, uh, you know, say your piece and hopefully we can get this implemented. And that's being tracked by anyone with a developer key. Which, by the way, they gave me for free. Yeah. I just asked for it. <laughs> they sent it back. Can you change your MAC address? Right now we cannot change our MAC address. Well, you're not supposed to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so is this supposed to just uh, pop up there or does somebody have to push a button somewhere? No. Okay. That means I'm doing it wrong. No, no. Screen's doing something. Oh. Screen's doing something. Good. There we go. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Kenny. Check the screen. Check the screen. No, I don't think that's a console. <laughs> hey. hey. Um, so sad. Like above, like a number screen right now. Get like an FM key that sets to external. It was totally there. Where'd it go? I didn't change anything. Control Z. I heard that. It's still before noon. <laughs> LBS will work if you're on the tower, if you're connected to the network. It will uh, be able to tell roughly where you're at. Um, Hey, 
All right. Kenny. 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 Look at this screen. You had a console blinking. I think that one's being chopped at the top, dude. Hit enter a couple times. I'm pressing enter. Oh, now it's gone again. All right, I'll keep stalling. So, yeah, right now it's a single tower and single panel antenna, and that's really the only way they're determining where you're at. Uh, again, like I said, it's several hundred meters is generally the distance between uh, each predefined range right now that they can determine. So, it's not horribly accurate, but if I really was determined to go get you, I could use LBS to narrow down roughly where you're at and kind of go snoop around from there. Um, hey. I see a hand. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Here's the caveat with that. Location-based services will tell if you're lying. So, <laughs> so we've noticed with we've noticed with Clear because we had some friends that we all met when we all came to DEF CON. Uh, we told them buy some gear, and they got here, and it just started working for days. I mean, they didn't register, didn't do anything. So it's kind of like they're they're giving you a teaser when you buy the gear. It just works for a little bit, so you can get a taste of it, and then they're just like, oh, okay, pay us. So. Mm -hmm. And he said it's provisioned unlimited down, one benefit capped up, mm -hmm. no bandwidth cap, no nothing. And it's, he said there's no way in their system to limit what's in the system. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they, and they do do that. We've also noticed that with some of these home routers, uh, they seem to kind of keep tabs on your home router once it's been turned on. They're like, hey, we notice you in this area. And then if your home router like starts jumping all over the place, they, it, it quits working in some areas, so. We can do the demo in the breakout session. Here's, so. It doesn't stop LBS, so. We haven't any luck yet. I see blinky cursor maybe. Hey, we got a blinky cursor. That's good. Hey. There we go. <laughs> so what this is doing right now is um, is basically this is this is really gross. I'm kind of embarrassed by it. Actually, I'm really embarrassed by it. It took me a long time to be okay and settle in with the concept of releasing this code to the public because it's so awful. But it's effective. Um, so I've got a shell script that's starting screen that's using OpenOCD to uh, load some TCL scripts because OpenOCD uses TCL as its script interpreter. Man, I haven't touched TCL in like 10 years. You guys remember egg drop bots? Anyway, different story. Um, so these TCL code bits, they're bringing in some MIPS32 machine code and dropping it via JTAG and that's what's actually transferring data between you know, flash and RAM and, and moving things around. So I'm, I'm taking, oh, hey, I think it's mostly done actually. Um, there's a nice little PS listing and uh, that's what's running on the box and, and there's root. Uh, it takes about a minute and a half to run. Yeah. Um, so what it did, does anybody care? Sort of? A little bit. I mean, because there's the mailing list too, and there's going to be documentation there. So I don't want to bore everybody to death here. What what the hell did it do? I don't know. I, I try to figure it out sometimes, but man, most of this code I wrote it like a year ago, so I've kind of forgotten. Um, but generally, so what it's doing is it, it goes in and, and uh, it transfers the bootloader config to a temporary area, um, you know, just somewhere else in Flash where it won't get nuked, and. Uh, then allows the original bootloader config to be overwritten or to, it actually erases it and lets a temporary one be, be written. Um, I just said um. I'm trying not to do that. Huh. Mental note. Thanks. Drink. <laughs> Have any of you spoken before at one of these conferences? Yeah. Show of hands. Just like, yeah, there's a couple people. Okay. <laughs> you feel my pain. This is my first time, so, you know. And it's still 10 a.m. and goddamn last night it's was awesome. 10 so. <laughs> it's almost 11. Shoot. What time is it anyway? Oh, almost there. 11. 
Cool. Well, I should get the heck out of here then. Uh, so the gist of the story is it shuffles a bunch of junk around, lets things get recreated, and then kind of uh, does a little jerry rigging and a little bit of this and a little bit of that to to sneak this console state unlocked past the scripts that are checking for it and the the program that um, automatically resets it to locked. Uh, I can uh, page up through this stuff, but it's really boring. If you if you want more detail, really, I think you should just come and chat with me, because seriously, the the details and the nitty gritty and looking at the the MIPS 32 code is is pretty gross. Um, but the code is available for perusal at this point, and there are some comments in there that probably don't make any sense because I've been making them for the last you know eight hours or so instead of sleeping. <laughs> it's good times, good times, yeah. And we have the uh, the breakout session in 107, I think. 107. So. Be there, if, be square. If you or, want any more, you know, intimate question asking sessions or anything, then yeah. uh, we'll be over there. So, are there any uh, questions while we're in here? Yeah. Any big ones? Right. Got a question over here. No. Okay, so the, the question was uh, that last year during the talk we announced that uh, any two modems on the network, whether they were registered or not, could talk to each other. And so the question was, did they ever patch that? Did they do anything to it? No, they didn't. Uh, if you have the hardware, it gives you an IP address. It's pretty much like a big, giant, nationwide wireless LAN party. I mean, if you got your friend's IP address, go nuts. Just tunnel, play video games, stream movies, do whatever the hell you want. I mean, oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, make sure you pay for service so you don't get in trouble, you know? Yeah. LBS is a bitch. They will be able to come find you. It's going to be a lot different than, like, big, giant, shared, wired, you know, cable networks like Comcast. They'll be able to track you a lot more finite than Comcast could do on their network with people who are, you know, stealing service. It's always very important to balance the give and take ratio. <laughs> how much do you pay them versus how much do you take from them? You know, <laughs> it's very important to keep that all in mind. Um, also, one thing that we did mention last year apparently was that the, uh, the clear spot runs Linux, um, and that's not true. It does not run Linux. We learned the hard way. Sorry about that. But just so you know, it's not Linux. Any other questions? Can LBS be used for mass surveillance? Ooh. So uh, I think what you'd be referring to is like just drift netting, anything, everything that comes in there. Um, I believe it could. They have two different servers. They got a development server and a production server, but both kind of give you the same results. And uh, with the development environment, though, they're a little bit more restrictive than the production environment. The production environment's sitting on some big old servers that just kind of let you go nuts. And uh, again, like I said, it's opt-in. You really do not have control of that. You are, you get on the network, within a few minutes, someone could look you up on LBS, and there's not a whole lot you could do. And you could just start going through every possible MAC address or IP address in the net block and just start pulling people's locations. And you could, after several hours, probably data mine a good portion of everyone's location going through one of these networks. So, so I think the short version of that is LBS scary? And the LBS answer, very yes. scary, yes. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Do, does Clear tell people that they're being tracked via LBS? <laughs> does Clear tell people that they're being <laughs> tracked via LBS? Is it in the contract? Has anybody seen it? I think that's the answer, really. If nobody's noticed that it's in the contract, then it's not visible enough. Whether they are actually including it or not, it's not visible enough. And that's effectively a no. Yes? I'm not sure how that differs very much from the cell phone tracking that they do for E911 services. It, it's that anyone can do it. Like I, I said before, I mean, it, it <laughs> does require authorized access, but I asked for access and they gave it to me for free. Yeah. So the, the question comment was so, uh, what's the difference here between E911 tracking and this LBS stuff? Um, well, LBS is available to any developer who wants to sign up for it. E911, you kind of have to be like in 911. <laughs> that, I think that's the significant difference is we're giving our location information in real time to anyone else who wants it. <laughs> 